truth and transparency in Louisiana's criminal justice system. Tell me about the proposed legislation. Look, this is a piece of legislation that is enjoying bipartisan support. Uh, we have had uh, a, a, a number of people from around the state, victims of crime, because we know. Look, let's start at where we are. We know that right now in Louisiana, we have three of the top ten most dangerous cities in America. So we got three cities in the top 10 most dangerous cities mm -hmm. in a state of only four and a half million people. That means we've got something structurally wrong with our criminal justice system. And in order to fix a problem, you got to be able to see the problem, right? You got to be able to see exactly what's going on inside of the system. What we found out from talking to victims from around the state, many of whom were victims in the cities that are listed in the top 10 most dangerous cities, that being Shreveport, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans. They say, hey, we can't see what's going on with our cases. Uh, we, had, we, we had a doctor from New Orleans testify that, that he specifically called the district attorney and said, I want to be involved in this case. The guy who held me up at gunpoint, I want to make sure that he goes to trial. He was not notified, and the case was dropped. This bill would create some transparency would allow victims of crime and the public to know exactly what's going on. And that in those cities, Baton Rouge, Orleans, and Shreveport, in those parishes, the clerks of those parishes would make that data available to us electronically because they've got electronic records right now. We've worked with the clerk of court, Doug Wellborn, fantastic, phenomenal clerk of court um, there in East Baton Rouge on this particular bill. He supports us as, if the, as does the clerks in those other parishes as well. And so what we're hoping, we, we, it should have been done yesterday. I don't know what's going on. The, the, the executive director of the Clerks Association, I think, has just like went off the deep end uh, because every one of the clerks that I've talked to support this. Uh, and, and for whatever reason, they, they, they were able to get the bill pulled until tomorrow. This bill needs to pass with no amendments. This is a common sense piece of legislation. It's the first step in giving – the public the flashlight because right now they're walking around in the dark without the flashlight to see what's going on so that we can hold people accountable in our criminal justice system we're talking with attorney general jeff landry about a little truth and transparency in uh, louisiana's criminal justice system uh, attorney general landry this isn't just about the three cities that you mentioned though uh the interconnectivity here i think is kind of the uh i i don't want to say the the silver bullet in solving crime but how many times do we see where someone is arrested, they're let on a bond, only to find out they had previous arrests in a different parish? Um, 38 of the 64 parish clerk offices in Louisiana, uh, only 38, offer online access as of right now. This is about getting a lot of ducks in one row. That's correct. It's a first step. It's a pilot program. You know, many times, Brian, what, what I have found, um, certainly as serving the public, is that when there's a problem, Politicians love to just knee-jerk react, big, broad beach policy. They don't think through the consequences of the particular policy. They do sweeping legislation uh, only to find out that it's problematic. And then, of course, they somewhat embarrassed. They don't like to fine-tune it. I like to start small. Create a pilot program. Let's see what's, what, what works and what doesn't work. Continue to work with stakeholders out there. Fine-tune it. And then take that information statewide when it works. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what this is designed to do. I think that's why we've got the bipartisan support. We certainly have the support of victims of crime from around the state. And, and we're hoping, again, that this is like one step in the next of many steps right. of getting back control of our communities and our streets. Right. Obviously, after we go from pilot to a full-on program, I just – I. Uh, as I look at this, it, it just it feels like the pilot program is just going to be the launching pad. I don't want to get ahead of the legislation, but, man, it just – I'm struggling to see where the negative would be here. Me, me too. Me too. That's what's amazing to me. Like, like the Speaker of the House should have had this thing. First on the agenda, it should go through bipartisan support, done. But, of course, you know, they play all kinds of games in that, in that town. Um, I don't know why. Uh, they, they tend to put politics over people. We do the opposite. This should be easy. We hope that tomorrow we get it through, no amendments, no funny business. Let's get back to work, you know, in, in making our, our streets safe. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, if there were any controversy with it, it would be about the juvenile end of this thing. Tell me about that part. 
Yeah, that, that is correct. You know, there's been a little bit of, of flurry about the fact that we're we're basically unsealing some of the data in juvenile records. I would make sure that people understand that over 20 states do this. And this this program will apply to juvenile court proceedings under which the juveniles are accused of committing acts of violence. I mean, this is I, I told someone the other day, you know, we hear about all this community policing. This is community policing, mm -hmm. right? When the public gets to know what juveniles in their neighborhood are terrorizing their neighborhood in violent ways. And of course, we all know what's going on. We need the ability to hold these juveniles accountable. And so, again, this is the first step is in making sure that the judges and the prosecutors are doing their job. And if they're doing their job and we still have a problem, that means that the law is defective. We already know the law is defective. We're going to fix that uh, at some point in time. But we have to be able to pinpoint exactly where those problems are and then continue to address them. So, again, we can get control of our communities and our streets. We're talking with Attorney General Jeff Landry about uh, this uh uh, transparency in the criminal justice system bill that's making its way through the legislative process. Attorney General Landry, you mentioned 20 other states already have this uh, when it comes to the juvenile records. What was done to, I don't, I don't want to say just copy and paste, but uh, make sure that this law wasn't written hastily, Make sure, or make sure this bill wasn't written hastily, uh, make sure that the bill that's passed can co be constitutionally held up. Look, well, because it comes out of our office. <clears throat> you know, and we've been working with it, you know, we had been working on this legislation for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many, many months before the session, we began putting together this piece of legislation, working with those legislators that were interested in trying to do something about crime in this state. And so we had our lawyers work on it. Uh, we worked with those particular legislators and the staff inside the state capitol to ensure that we met the constitutional muster. Uh, this is easy. Look, under the Children's Code 879, juvenile proceedings on violent crime are ready. The, the hearings are ready open to the public. But the public has to go in to see what exactly is going on. And so this is really not that big of a deal mm -hmm. and the public should have a right to know when violent crime is occurring on our streets who is responsible for that violence we're talking with attorney general jeff landry i think i probably skipped the past one of the bigger questions here uh whose bill is this i didn't even whose yeah. bill is it what number is it this is representative debbie Villio's bill i think it's house bill 321 oh brian you're gonna catch me off off guard no no got uh, but, the site open but, in front of me we can get there <laughs> but it's representative debbie Villio's bill it should be on the floor of the house tomorrow is. again i would emphasize this came out of committee with bipartisan support mm -hmm. bipartisan support. democrats and republicans uh supported this after lengthy testimony from victims from around the state who wanted their voices heard i mean look we had we had Boogie B's mom, Sherilyn Price, was there. We had Michelle Anglin, whose daughter was killed in their living room by a stray bullet. We had Cortez Collins, who's the police officer from the Shreveport area, whose son was murdered as well, as many, as well as many, many others um, who came out and supported this. Uh, you know, Paul Rice, whose daughter, Allison, was murdered in Baton Rouge. Look, victims of, of violent crime feel like they have no voice and they and they feel like the criminal justice system is confusing and it's less transparent mm -hmm. this starts to put some transparency and put them back in control because again justice is really served when the victims of those crimes are made whole and that the contract between the state and those victims is fulfilled and that's what you call justice Got about a minute left with Attorney General Jeff Landry. Okay, so this bill, the, the Truth and Transparency Bill, uh, a, as a pilot program would be launched in the three most violent cities in the state. Uh, is there a timeline on the back end, or would it take a separate bill altogether uh, to broaden this out to other municipalities? 
this, this, so this program will operate for two years. We have the ability to come back session after session and tweak it. What our hope, this is, this is what the ultimate end game is. And I don't know if we're going to get there. I don't want to make any promises, but I'll tell you what our goal is. Our goal is eventually to create a victim's notification app, uh, kind of similar to, you know, we run the um, uh, sex offender registry, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and we're able to notify people when, when those on the registration register move from place to place. Our idea is that if you are unfortunately become a victim of violent crime, uh, you will be able to have an app that notifies you when the bond hearings are, when the hearings are, when the evidentiary hearings are, what exactly is happening in that particular case, so that you can track your case, okay, and that defendant, the accused, mm-hmm. through the system. That's the ultimate goal, because I think that that puts the power of uh, of the criminal justice system in the hands of the public where it rightfully belongs. That's the ultimate end goal. We'll see if we can get there. And and that can be broadened out completely all 64 parishes? Well, like you said earlier, I think 38 of the 64 have electronic records. Mm -hmm. We have to work with those clerks um, to basically upgrade those systems. Uh, And I think that, I think that those clerks would embrace that. Uh, I think that they would like to have their records electronically. Uh, there is a cost involved as how they get it done. But look, 38 of the 64 have been able to do it. Uh, and we're going to work with those clerks to try to get that done. So again, because remember, those clerks are court elected by the, the public in, in, in their particular parishes, by the citizens of those parishes. They are the, those, they are, uh, those citizens are their constituents. Uh, and, and, and I have not met any of the clerks that, that really uh, oppose this. I, I couldn't see why we wouldn't. We will work with them. Just like we've worked, and, and Doug will tell you, like, again, like you got a fine clerk of court right there in East Baton Rouge, runs an unbelievable department, got some great people working for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, this is being able to get the public access to what's going on to help get back control of our streets and our communities from the criminals. I, it feels to me like the hardest part is going to be waiting in the two years from this to go from pilot to full-on program. Yeah, well, that's okay. Look, you know, <clears throat> folks like me, that's what we do every day, Brian. Mm-hmm. We get up working for y'all, and we'll continue to work, like I said, until we get control of the streets in our communities. He is Attorney General Jeff Landry. We are just straight up out of time for this segment. Attorney General Landry, look forward to talking to you uh, in the near future. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.